Ito first, first, that's first, right? First, first, second, third. Alright, Alfred's crew. And they're making breakfast before the race. Ano boy? Magkaya ka na kaya ano? Iyan. Fuck you, Iyan. Alright, check out the track. So, here's the track layout for today. Um... It's quite small because of the basement, but the starting line begins over here. Then it go a few panels straight, go onto the lane changer. And there's a 20 degree bank going over here. And then a slope and two receivers. And then another lane changer around and there's the starting line. So it's not that big, but this is a torque based and proper braking uh, layout so um let's see how they overcome this layout because this 20 degree bank will cause a little delay and it will be easier to re um to recover this um to overcome this slope compared to regular if it's flat but the thing is if you over break over here it's gonna cause you a lot of delay and it will slow your car. So it's basically um, doing the right brake settings to overcome this layout. I mean, it looks easy because you can you can actually land safely over here because there's two recovery panels and there's like lane changer and there's like a wave over there too before the lane changer. But coming from a curve. But let's see how they overcome it later. And let's check it out. <laughs> All right, first lane, Jason. Second lane, Skip. Alright, finals. Nine laps, finals. Alright, finals. Nine laps. Oh, no, what, what lane? I don't know, Ali, what lane? Uh, one and three. Alright. It matter what It's one or three. Alright, you got two minutes to fix that shit, boy. I felt that. That's my car, right? That's my car. Drop my car for me. Yeah. Finals. Yeah. Count, Ali. Alright, winner! Second place, 
Ada motor sapi squad and I'm a teacher here in New Brook so there you go you saw the video of the box stock in the open class race here in Connecticut it's our new venue in the East Hartford Connecticut thank you Alfred and Kala for hosting um thank you EJ for coming down from New Jersey and for all the mini four-wheel drivers that are interested here in Connecticut area um you can follow us on Facebook it's uh, CTUSA mini four-wheel drive racing squad and you can also Follow us in Noob Works, Mini Four Wheel Drive, and also in Instagram and me, myself, Shell Shot. All right, so today we have a car feature. Um, we're going to talk about my car band. It was the car that I used for Open Class last event. All right, so to get going, um, we're going to start with the body shell. My body shell is a Vanquish clear body. It was painted orange to color match. And it's item number 15448. Nothing special about this chassis. I mean, uh, this polycarbonate body. This polycarbonate body is just lighter, and I like the style. It's one of my favorite because um, when I was starting VS chassis, I realized that I need to have a uh, body shell that was very adaptable and easy to cut and you know, and to shape. But it's one of my favorite because I like it. It does have that aggressive look, and it's light. All right. Next part would be the chassis. All right. Um, some people might be wondering, the people that just followed me, why I'm using bright yellow and orange colors. One is I want to see my car, whether it's dark or the venue is very bright. I just want, I just like following my car because, uh, I have some black cars too, but I like as bright as possible so I can see my car when it's running. All right. So. My VS chassis, uh, my chassis of choice is VS chassis. Why? Because I want this car to accelerate as much as possible. So the people that follow me already, the VS chassis is very fast when it comes to acceleration. That's why I picked the VS chassis. Um, so VS chassis reinforced yellow 94657. Um, that's the yellow one. I picked yellow because it's bright and I also it's reinforced. So... You all know that the VS chassis is very flimsy. It's one of the weakness of this chassis. It's very flimsy and it's durability and toughness. So buying a reinforced VS chassis yellow 94657 uh, lessened that risk of the car breaking, the chassis breaking, because it's already reinforced. All right, so as you can see, it is bumperless. Um, it's bumperless, so I can put the bumper closer to the body. And also, it makes it durable by putting some uh, reinforcing parts over here up front. But we'll get to that. Um, but again, the chassis that I use is 94657 VS chassis reinforced yellow. And if you guys are wondering why does it have those orange A parts, the orange A parts is from a VS fluorescent color chassis set 95355. Nothing special about it. I just want it to be two-toned and matching my whole build because I'm anal about that. I'm kind of like OCD when it comes to that. Again, that's item number 95355. You can also use the other eight parts, but it's up to you what color combination you want to use or you just want to stick with the yellow, like the pure yellow build. But for me, I want it orange and yellow. So that's a chassis set. There's a set of green and orange, and then obviously I took the orange parts. All right. Next part is the body damper system. So we I used the carbon reinforcing plate, but it was an old carbon reinforcing plate. So as you can see, it's old. There's no logo. It's uh if you look for it, it's item number nine four eight four five. Why did I use that? Because I mistake I had a mistake cutting it. So I shaped it like this to add a body damper, and that was an F that's an FRP plate scrap that I have for my sliding, so I just put this put that as a support but the one that i use for this body damper thing uh for the front body damper is the carbon reinforced plate set 94845 all right um so that's how i built it if you guys are wondering why did i use front body damper because i want the car to land forward because um i want all the momentum going forward because that layout have um 
a double um a two receiver panel so i want it to the card to be landing forward not tilting like this so i want it forward like that so that's why i want it on a body damper front body damper system shout out rex vincent by the way i learned that from rex by watching his um track elements video if you guys want the track elements video you guys can search it on the new works new um youtube page all right um uh, next would be the high grade carbon reinforcing plate set for 13 millimeter and 19 millimeter holes that's 15497 okay these are these these are the body damper for me it acts like an underguard this part cuz uh when the car flops and let's say you're approaching the slope and the car flops like this there are some tendencies that this part will get caught if it goes brighter. There you go. Clear. They will get caught. So I use this as um, body damper under guards. So I cut those pieces. So you can see. I cut it. So it acts like um, an under guard for the body damper. That's item number... One five four nine seven. Okay, so you guys already know that that's the reason why I used that part. All right, so let's go to the mass damper set. Um, I use two kinds of damper set. Uh, it's the adjustable mass damper set. Two two point five grams nine five three two four. This are this is the one on top, so it's lighter. I use two of it. Again, it's item number 95324. Um, this is very useful because I like this because it's lighter. So it pushes the other damper down. It's just give you more um, more balance when it comes to your landing. Because if this damper is not enough, this is acts like, a, like an absorption. I mean, it's a damper, so it absorbs shock. So I put it back for the rebound. All right, so that's the adjustable mass dampers, 2.5 grams, 95324. All right, this smaller one is uh, for the people that's wondering where do I get this. It's from the side mass damper set for AR. It's 15459. Again, that's item number 15459. It's light enough. I only took the lower part because usually there's a bullet damper on it, but I only took the lower cylinder damper. So I'll combine it with the uh, mass damper, 2.5 grams uh, damper. So there you go. Those are my damper combinations for my front body damper. All right. So moving on. We have the, for the front brake, we'll start with the front brake. Okay, here's my front brake. It's just an ordinary... You know, it's nothing special about the front brake. I just made sure everything is countersunk. It's um, hard grade carbon reinforcing plate set. That's for my brake set. That's a that's a carbon too, but it's a different um, item number compared to this. Again, the the item number for this is nine four eight four five. For this one, it's a one five four nine five, because this was a later release. This one doesn't have a logo, and this one have a logo. Again, that's item number 15495. Um, it's a high-grade carbon reinforcing plate. I only took one, one of them. All right, so it shows the logo over there. The other one doesn't have a logo. And also, I use this here so I can have a protruding break because I want it to bite more. I want it to bite early. So I want this brake to bite early, even though it's covered with tape. Um, when it's protruding like this, it bites early when it comes to slope, and it gives you a little more bite when you want more brakes to grip. So it bites it bites early during the slope and going to the ramps and you know bangs and stuff. So that's why it's protruding like this. All right, so. I told you guys there's no default setup. Every setup that I build is different. It depends on the track layout, which car I'm going to use. All right. Next uh, is the FRP multi-reinforcing plate right here. 
that's my underguard. So that's just FRP. As you can see, I chopped the hell out of it just to make it lighter. And, you know, some super glue over there to make it tougher because it's just FRP. Because I, I run out of the carbon plate. Multi-reinforcing plate. It's 15193 for my underguard, rear underguard. There you go. There it's attached with the rear underguard. So those are the two popsicles that I used. All right. I use underguard so the car won't get caught on the track wall when it's you know when it jumps and sometimes it gets shaken on inside the track. It gets disaligned and you know next thing you know your car gets caught with a wall and you don't want to lose like that. All right. Next would be the high grade carbon rear multi setting stay, 1.5 millimeters for front and rear bumper. That's item number 95260. Uh, we are talking about this two one right here, one right here, this rear part, and one right here. All right, again, that's item number carbon, uh, high grade carbon rear multi setting stay, item number 95260. All right, 95260. So this is cut like this. So it will actually flush with that VS chassis part. As you can see, it's molded like this. So it was flushed to be perfectly aligned over there to be reinforced. And it was cut like this and made a new hole. For SRP racers, these are not allowed, but made a new hole. And the scraps <clears throat> were shaped like this. So it can reinforce the chassis. Now it's super tough. So I bumperless this chassis. And the reason why I bumperless is to make it closer to the body for cornering. <clears throat> and also to make it tougher because the weakness of the VS chassis, its toughness is very weak. And it's durability. So when it's flush like that, that thing is very stiff and very hard. So you can see. It's very hard. So study your chassis. So you will know how to make your chassis durable or max or overcome its weaknesses. So I put those plates over there. Cut it with just Dremel. I don't have a CNC machine. So it's kind of like, you know, it's not perfect. I just traced some parts. So, um, yeah. I kind of sandwiched that chassis over there to make it tougher. All right. So that's the reason why this VS chassis is, I cut it to bumper less. So the carbon that I use is high grade carbon rear multi stay 95260. And for the rear part, the rear part over here, I cut the two sides and then attach it. So I can attach another part to make it durable. That's why there's like two-piece carbon over there. I use carbon because I want it to be light as much as possible. So that's the multi-setting. That's, that's the second multi-setting state that I use. You can see it was cut like that. All right. If you want a closer look. See, it was cut right there. And it was attached over there. Okay. Next is the high grade carbon front stay multi fu for fully cowed. So high grade carbon stay for fully cowed. It's 95433. We have two of that. That's the one that we use for bumper. This. And for the rear part, this. So we need two of that item number 95433. The reason why I picked those two parts to be my bumper, because some people will be asking, you can just use popsicle or other parts. I use this because it was. It's perfect because it's curved like that. There's like an angle on that carbon plate. And it brings you closer to the body. Even though this is not cut. This is bumperless car. I mean chassis is not all the way cut. Or all the way cut because I have other cuts with this. I can still make the roller closer to the body as much as I can. Because of the fully cowed carbon plate. So even though it's protruding. And I got my multi setting uh, stay over here i just put this on top and i can put it closer to the body for cornering pur purposes because i can make the car roller position as short as possible uh same thing with the rear 
See? I cut a piece over there. As you can see, I cut it so there will be no protruding um protruding um parts over there for the rear, but still it is uh the fully cowed carbon plate close to the body. So you can see there's only a very, very small gap on it on the wheels. Doesn't hit. Alright. So again, that's item number Nine five four three three for front and rear. That's the front one. That's the rear part. So you can see the car shortens because of the roller positioning. So the roller positioning is really short. So it makes it really fast in cornering. All right. Next part for the rear brakes. So you can see. All right. I put a. I cut it like this and align this up. I only use my uh, rotary tool or my Dremel. Because I don't have a CNC machine, I try my best to make it align as possible. It's a uh, high grade carbon. It's high grade carbon wide front plate. One five four nine eight. All right, one five four nine eight. I use this plate because um, I want to have a long tail setup, but not too too long. I just want it to be like right in the middle, not too long, not too short. Um, and it's very stylish in my opinion. And I can put my dump, my dampers on the side and still doesn't ruin the style. And all in all for racing purposes, for long tail because it's extended because of these two holes over here. It's not even countersunk. That's how lazy I am. <laughs> but don't be lazy. Alright? Don't be lazy. It's not even countersunk as you can see. It's a carbon wide front plate one five four four eight rear for my rear brakes. All right. Uh, for so you can see the rear. You might be wondering what is this part? Okay, so one of the weakness of the VS chassis is very flimsy, toughness and durability is uh, the weakness of it. So we have to make the car very tough. All right, so I'm gonna show you how did I reinforce this car. Uh, we're just gonna dismantle it for now removing those lock nuts you must be wondering also why do I have this spoiler this spoiler spoiler for is for aerodynamics too because when the wind blows over there it says part of the vanquished body all right all right ta -da, here's my secret all right so um, here's the three point attachment if you guys are wondering what is this part it's a carbon rear double roller stay three point attachment one five four one two. Again, it's one five four one two. The three point attachment carbon double roller. So I cut it. Uh, if you guys can't see, there you go. It was cut over there. It was cut, and I put spacers over it so it will actually flush and fit. But so I cut. I basically took that. I only took the three point attachment. I didn't took. I did I don't need that roller setting stay holes or adaptability holes. I just need that three point attachment to make it very durable. So now it's secured with this with this hole screwed over here and this two over here. So you can see again that's item number one five four one two carbon reinforced rear double roller stay. Um it takes a lot of practice. You have to have a rotary tool or a hacksaw just to cut that part and you can put a spacer over there all right that makes sense next part we're going to talk about is my stabilizers uh, a lot, i'm getting a lot of questions about this part and i don't get a chance to answer it it's uh it's a small diameter wheels actually this are item number one five four one five this is small diameter carbon wheels for Super X and Super XX chassis, it comes with a white art tire. So it's a set of wheels. Actually, why do I use this? It acts as stabilizer for me when I'm racing on traditional lane changer. Because, you know, some track layouts have um, traditional lane changers. And I have an ag angle, obviously. And um, this stabilizes my car because it, there's a huge surface that hit the track wall and gets my car stabilized and also i like the way it looks it looks like a shield actually when on my front 
that's the purpose why I have a stabilizer, a small diameter carbon wheels, 15415. But but the rear part, you guys must be wondering, you don't need it, the rear part because you already have it up front and that doesn't hit anything. But I use this as a guard too. Because sometimes, in some situations, not all the time, the car can get, the rollers at the rear can get caught in the track wall. Especially if you have long screws. I mean, I, I don't have a long screw, but it's long enough to get caught. Sometimes it get caught like this and it costs a delay even though the car goes back while it's running when it hits the track wall. It still it, do, it still does cause some delays. So by having this it put, it's like a shield or a guard that um helps the car not to get caught on the track wall. This is kind of old school nowadays. I've seen this a lot of times before, way before, to like think 2016 or 2015. I've already seen people doing this, and I'm still doing it. Some people are using carbon pieces now that sit, that guards the whole thing, and it's more tougher and it's less weight, obviously, because it's carbon. But I'm still old school. I'm using the small diameter wheels. Again, that's item number 1541. I mean, no, 15415 if you guys are interested doing this kind of setup all right next would be the 19 millimeter ball race rollers ring last that's the front one that's the asia cop old school 2016 rollers i like it black because it matches and also i don't know i like it black because it's like it gives that aggressive look even though this rollers are quite old that i have it's item number 95272 it's ringless and it's Asia Cup. It's ringless because I don't want to cause any delay up front because that's the rollers that guide my car. As you can see, it's kind of old because the bearings are already like dirty and rough. But I need to clean it. And it's 19 millimeters because I want to maximize that cornering speed even though it's 19 millimeter and have a thick contact surface. It's 19, so it helps you to corner faster, especially you have that very wide front bumper. Again, it's item number 95272. If you have questions with roller settings, we have a video about that also in our Noobworks YouTube page here. You can search it, basic roller set, uh, basic knowledge about rollers. All right, so again, that's the Asia Cup 19 millimeter ring list over there in front. Nothing special. You can use any roller if you want, but I choose a 19 millimeter for cornering purposes. All right, at the rear part, we have the 19 millimeter aero spoke aluminum rollers with plastic rings, orange 95328. Again, it's 95328. These are plastic orange aero spoke. I use aero spoke one because it's one of the lightest rollers that you can buy. So I want it to be light as much as possible because we're only using Hyper Dash and I want the build to be light. Maximize that strength that the chassis is already already light to begin with. Second, it does have plastic rings and you are just basically dragging the rear part so you will have all that acceleration and power from the motor with no delay, less delay. I mean less delay because it's plastic because Plastic and bearing combination is the faster, fastest rolling combination, roller combination for me. Especially when it's 19, so you're just dragging that rear with all that plastic, hitting that plastic um, track or any kind of track plas with plastic ring. It's just really, really fast. You're basically sacrificing some stability, but I think this is stable enough and fast enough to be competitive. And also... Uh, it's so close to the body and you have that optimal cornering speed because the roller settings are really short. All right, as so you can see, again, that's item number 95328. You need two packs of that, so you only get two in one pack, so you need two packs of that. All right, so if you guys are wondering what kind of plastic spacers did I use, I use the lightweight plastic spacer set black 15506. Again, that's item number 15506. I have one, two, I have three, four over there in between the three point attachments. Five, six, and that's about it. 
I used that lightweight plastic spacer set. Black. It's not aluminum. It's 15506. Because it's lighter. So I want the car to be light as much as possible. Alright. So we are going inside the car. Before we go inside the car. I know you guys are wondering. And I know you guys are waiting for it. I already revealed some reinforcements. One are these two. So it supports the chassis. Because it's like. It does have a new hole. Again, in international and Japan Cup rules, and open class rules, you can do this. You can make a hole, a new hole, to make the car durable. But in the Philippines, where I came from, it's called SRP rules. You are not allowed to make a new hole. Remember that. So you guys are, don't be mad at me or don't be blaming me if you guys, oh, Shell Shock says that I can make a new hole, but you gotta know what kind of house rules or what kind of category you're racing. Cause in SRP rules, in the uh, Speed Tech Racers of the Philippine rules, you are not allowed to make new holes. Only an in international Japan Cup rules, you are allowed to do that. So that's one reinforcement. Attach over there. Second reinforcement that I did is this. This is an FRP part. This is an FRP for my popsicle. Um, it's an item number um, 15193. So I already mentioned that before with my underguard. It's only a FRP, but it locks. What it does is it locks this catch. It acts like an easy lock. I put a spacer and, um, and a lock nut over there. So this is one of my secrets. Well, it's not a secret anymore, but it's one of the things that I don't usually teach. But I'm showing you guys because this is one common problem with the VS chassis. If you have a lot of torque and a lot of power on your VS chassis, this pops. There are two ways of securing it. Some people put some... Um, breaks over there so it's tight when you pop it over there but i don't need to because i have this and also i put some brake pads over there i already lost one because of the race but there's usually two so it aligns the motor and it's more um for some transmission problems it's kind of loud but it pushes the motor to be aligned on the chassis to smoother transmission so this is Number two reinforcement, an easy lock at the rear. Another reinforcement that I did is this. When I cut the multi-setting stay, which I cut earlier, it was the 95260. It's the carbon rear multi-setting stay, which is this at the rear. When I cut this part, I took this part. So it acts like a metal, a support that pushes the motor to be aligned all right, so when you're running on your mini four-wheel drive on the track, once you drop it, there's a lot of movements over there. There's a lot of vibrations, and it lessens the vibration. Even though this is not a conductor, because there are some there are some uh, motor supports out there that that are aluminum, so it acts like a heat sink that absorbs the heat from the motor. This doesn't because it's not a conductor, but it pushes the motor and acts like a support. So it's like all your power and your torque that you need from the motor transferred to the gears, to the wheels. The the vibration are lessened. So you are maximizing the power of the car. All right. This car, now that I discussed some reinforcements. All right. So we're going to open this. All right, so you can see I have a high speed gear set, high speed gear set. It's only for one. All right, because this build is actually built for acceleration and just for hard, high torque purposes. All right, so I have a high speed counter gear set, one, five, two, three, six. It's the brown and the black gear. Gear ratio is four is to one high speed counter gear set one five two three six because I want to have the optimal torque as much as possible. So this car is built for short tracks, a lot of jumps, a lot of cornering, and a lot of high banks because the having a four one gear ratio gives you a lot of torque, especially if you have the right combination of motors and especially you know you have the VS chassis. So this car have a high acceleration speed, 
cornering speed using hyperdash motor is and combining it with a 41 gear ratio and a 26 millimeter large diameter wheels will get the job done when it comes to torque and especially it's super light so again it's item number 15236 the high speed counter gear set all right um so next would be oh okay before i forgot i have a floating gear transmission over here all right floating transmission i actually don't have the floating gear i only have a floating transmission i used an aluminum spacer silver it's one five four seven three so i basically put 1.5 millimeter aluminum spacer over there with a motor spacer in between it Let's see if you guys can see that's the silver spacer that I use. It's aluminum spacer set. Again, it's 15473. And in between the crown gear, I mean the counter gear, and that spacer is a motor spacer over there. If you can see, it's a motor spacer. So that's for my floating transmission. All right. Okay. Next item that I use is a hollow propeller shaft for Super X. Okay, this one is very important. All right, for all the people that want to be a VS chassis user, this one. This item. All right, it is hollow propeller shaft for Super, Super X. One, five, two, three, four. All right. I don't usually teach this too, but now I'm showing it to you guys because this is one of the toughest propeller shaft out there in the market. Um, you guys are wondering because this is for Super X and this is not for um, VS chassis and how did I made it fit? So I cut the propeller shaft. I cut it just to be perfect to be 16 millimeters over there. So it can actually like perfect length for the BS chassis. See, there's no wiggling. There's no waggling. It's just perfectly attached over there. Because I don't want any delays, you know. I don't want any any uh, friction or uh, what do you call this. Um, any, yeah, any friction or any delays that will cause... The car to be slower all right so again that's hollow propeller shaft for super x one five two three four all right one five two three four hollow propeller shaft that is very tough you know i reinforced it using super glue uh if you want to know how to reinforce this uh, mig x have a video about it i think all right as you can see i cut it there's still some over that got i need to trim that down but this one is very important. So people are wondering, I was like, oh, I always break my VS chassis propeller shaft. Mm -mm, not anymore. Now that you have this reinforced chassis, I mean, this propeller shaft item number 15234. All right. And for my uh, crown gears, I got the G13 right here. As you can see, it's carbon. I use carbon because it's durable and it's strong compared to the plastic one because the plastic one G13 always breaks. And I also use a uh, pinion gear, carbon pinion gear, because when I have that maximum torque, sometimes the pink pinion gear breaks. I still prepare using that purple, I mean the purple pinion gear, but I use carbon in this one because I have, a, I need, a, I need a lot of durability from this carbon pinion gear, and I found way to reinforce it. I put um, a paint marker in between it just to make it really really tight that's uh one of the new um new racers doesn't know that you have to put paint mar marker on the tip of the motor so i use the carbon reinforced 18 pinion gear set and 13 crown gear item number 15462 again that's item number 15462 it's a carbon crown gears g13 crown gears and 18 pinion gears all right it's lighter it's more durable all right, my motor is Hyperdash 2016-95091. Right here, Hyperdash 2016. There you go. Nothing special about it. It's one of my old Hyperdash. 
It's 95091. I use Hyperdash because Hyperdash is balanced. You have that kick for torque and you also have an average top speed. So if you have the right combination of the gears and the wheels and a proper break in with a nice battery, that will get the job done. And I think this is enough to compete on the short track that we had last event. So that's item number 95091 Hyperdash 3 2016. All right, and also I have AO 620s. I have one over here. It's an AO 620 on my gear, on my counter gear. And I'll also put a spacer over there. So the reason why I put spacers, so it won't be moving as much. Let me show you. I'm telling you all my secrets on my VS chassis now. And as you can see, if you put a spacer over there, it leaves a gap over there. So when the, the, when the crown gear, I mean, when the counter gear starts running, it goes like this, especially if you don't have a floating trans, uh, gear like me. So this is just a, re a regular gear with a 620. It pushes, it, it acts like a guard on the crown gear. So it won't be rubbing on that wall. All right. So it won't cause any delays or any friction because a loose transmission. It's a slow transmission. All right. So AO620 over there. Also, I use AO620s. One, two, three, four, five, and five. All right. Those are my AO620s. Right. Those are the ones that I use. All right. So we're done inside a car. Oh, actually, we're not. I'm going to show you another reinforcement. Right here. All right. So not a lot of people know about this. I made a lot of research way before because I love this chassis. So this is what I'm telling you guys before I continue. You have to study the chassis, study the strength and weaknesses, overcome the weaknesses, compensate the weaknesses, and maximize its strengths and capabilities. And there's no such thing as a default chassis on every track layout. You know, there's no, there's, you have to continue learning, continue exploring, and you have to know your car. You know, above all, you have to know your car, how it runs, how it moves. Just, you know, it's like having, um, having the obsession on that chassis for you to know its strengths and weaknesses and study how will you overcome that. All right. So, um. That's a carbon piece over there. The reason why I have that carbon piece over there is I broke a lot of chassis way in the past. I was racing. Um, let me show you. Not a lot of racers will teach you this because not a lot of racers is obsessed with VS chassis like me. But as you can see, when you put the propeller shaft like that, that part, if you don't put a carbon piece over there, the propeller shaft will move up and down when it's running, up and down. It will move up and down like that, and it will go left and right. That piece over there in between that carbon and the propeller shaft, that yellow piece over there, this one reason why I like a yellow... Uh, a bright chassis so you can actually see because in black chassis you can't see this but now it's yellow you can see that part when it moves like that it grinds over there and causes a lot of friction and it breaks that part once that part breaks your ch transmission will be very loud and it will be grinding your crown gears breaking your crown gears and breaking your propeller shaft at the same time so once you have that reinforcement over there it helps your propeller shaft to be aligned and not to break. So I basically just cut it perfect fit on that square over there and glued it. And that will help your chassis not I mean this part not to break. All right, remember that reinforcement. So I'm laying all the cards now over here, kind of spoon feeding, but I'm getting a lot of questions from you guys about VS chassis and this. There's no secret about my chassis. Everybody was like, why it's so fast? I just build the right setup 
for the right track. They'd be like, so fast, it's so stable, it must not be hyper, it must, you be, you might be running Ultra Dash. I'm like, hell no. I'm using <laughs> Hyper Dash, and I just study this chassis and just made the right decision when I'm racing. All right, so we're done with the transmission. All right, we're gonna put this back. No secret, as you can see. Locked. Okay. The next part that we're gonna talk about is the the wheels. All right, it's my favorite. Thank you. Shout out Mig X for making this wheels for me. Mig X made this wheels for me last year. I finally get a chance to use it. It's um from the Thunder Dragon wheel set 95336. All right. 95336. All right? That's a Thunder Dragon kit and that's where we took this wheels from. It's bright yellow so it actually match. Shout out again Mig X, the founder of New Works, the one and only from uh, SoCal. Team Hoodie Hoo. Shout out and um yeah so it's from a thunder dragon wheel 95336 those are large diameter six spoke wheels all right large diameter so it's trimmed to 26 millimeters the rubber is from a manta ray orange 92239 this rubber wheels is from manta ray 92239 it's a uh, rubber hard wheels from a manta ray orange all right hard tires Manta Ray Orange from Jason Kidd from Tuners North Mall and from um from uh what you call what's his name? I forgot about him. Oh my god, he's gonna be abandoned me. Kay paeng to kay paeng to galing eh. Kay paeng. Kay Tamiya Jasper. There you go. Tamiya Jasper. Thank you so much for these wheels and Jason Kidd. All right, they're the one who found these wheels for me. I mean, these tires for me. Thank you so much, uh, Tamiya Jasper. And I didn't forget about you, man. I still remember you. Don't worry, I'll see you soon. Um, and also, um, Jason Kidd, thank you. So, Mig X and Jason Kidd made this wheels happen, this wheel combination happen. I use hard tires because I want um, I want the sh the torque differential to be lessened because this is kind of slippery compared to other tires. Lesser bounce because it's hard, but not super hard. Wide stance because I want it to be stable in landing. Because, you know, when the car lands, it's like um, it does have the wide stance. So it's less likely to tilt. So that's my how I compensate my um, my weakness when it comes to stability because it's a VS chassis. And that's item number 92239, the Manta Ray Orange. All right. That's kind of rare, but I like the orange. We call this the Cheeto wheels. Thank you, Migex, again. All right. Um, we're going to go to the last few parts that we have. Um, I have these two, this O-rings over here. It's A0542, 3mm O-ring. Item number 9, I mean, item number 84195. Again, item number 84195, A0542. It's O-rings, so I put it here at the bottom, right here. Before I put the body damper in the springs. I like this because it doesn't, it's not, it acts like, um, it's like a gasket. You know, when it comes to cars, it acts like a gasket that when it bends like that, it doesn't break that much. And, you know, it's like a, it absorbs that impact. When you're doing a body, when the body damper works. All right. Again, that's item number A O five forty two three millimeter O ring black eight four one nine five. All right. Next would be the sliding damper spring set. I got the soft ones over here. I got two of them. I use soft because um I want more play as much as possible. There you go. I use it for my body damper. Oops. It's A O ten thirty four item number one zero three zero five. Again, it's item number one zero three zero five A O three. I mean A O ten three four. That's the sliding damper spring set soft. All right, and before the sliding damper spring soft, we have the A O one zero zero two item number nine four three eight one. Again, item number nine four three eight one A O. 
10.02 metal bearing set. So we need metal bearing set. We have four of that. If I didn't lose the rest of them. Uh, this is what it looks like. Some people use it as a spring cap. They call it spring cap. But actually, they are metal bearing sets. They're not spring caps. A lot of people calling it spring caps, including me. But since it's an AO bearing set. 1002, item number 94381. And if you guys are wondering where it goes, it goes over here. So it goes here. It it it, it just acts like a shock. You know, it's like a what do you call this? It acts like um coilovers for me. <laughs> it's like coilovers when it comes to real cars. Alright. It goes over here. Like that. One in the bottom, one on top. On the of the spring. This. This. Over here. It goes like that. There you go. That's what's gonna look like. All right. That's a metal bearing. Nine four three eight one A O ten O two. All right. So this is the spoiler that I mentioned earlier that I didn't mention. This is the part from the Vanquish the spoiler, and it acts like an aerodynamic spoiler because when you see when the air blows like that, it goes slides all the way here. For aerodynamic purposes. And also, I hide my secrets over there so nobody can see. <laughs> All right? Just kidding aside. All right. So, we're going to lock this up. Um, yeah. So, as you guys can see, now that we're done with the car review. So, you can see, I don't have a default setup. Every setup is different. And also, um, I compensate the strength. I mean the weakness of the chassis and maximize the strength of this chassis and to overcome a certain track layout. So always remember that there's no such thing as the best. There's no such thing as the worst. Every part has its purpose. It depends what kind of track layout and your over overall setup that you are using. I'm only using Hyperdash. Um, we're going to weigh this because I get that question all the time. Without batteries, with the battery lock. Let's see how much it weighs. Uh, see, there you go. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. That's 112 grams. 110. Actually, oh, 112 right there. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. It's 112 grams. So it's very light. That's the reason why it's fast. It's not because of the motor. Because it's light. Um, and let's check the top speed of this car. Before I go... The current of the batteries is 1.49 and 1.50. All right. Let's check the top speed. Again, the wheel combination is 26 millimeters for one gear ratio. All right. can see it's 34 kilometers per hour all right so there's not it's not super fast it's just like like that fast all right um and before i forget i just saw it um i have this dampers over here it's slim mass damper black set 95314 for my rear dampers there you go i just remember that it's a slim damper set black 95314. It's all separated like this because the motor is already at the rear. So it's separated like that. So it balances it out. It's not too heavy because, in my opinion, my car is not bouncy. So 
I don't need much uh, heavy weight dampers at the rear. And also, I have a front body damper. So if I put it heavy, it will tilt a little bit. I want it to tilt forward like this. So that's why I have this slim mass damper set. 95314. I apologize for that late late one. Alright. That late part. So yeah, so this is my uh, VS chassis band. 34 kilometers per hour, as you can see, on 1.5 volts. Nothing special about it. Just about my brake settings and overall setup. This is Shell Shop from CTUSA Mini 4-Wheel Drive Racing Squad. I'm a teacher here in New Works and hope you enjoy this video and you learn something about it uh, and everything you need to know about my VS chassis. So, as I always say, we learn from you, you learn from us. This is Shell Shock. Always race humble. Peace.